Special City Council uh, meeting today is uh, February the 12th, uh, 2020. At this point, I will ask uh, um, everyone uh, to please stand, if they're able to do so, to pledge the, to the flag. Right. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank everyone that's here um, attending this uh, emergency uh, meeting that we held. Of course, uh, no need uh, to be alarmed. We are simply gathering here today to be able to uh, assure our community that we're doing our best to inform them as well in conjunction with the school district and, and the water district as well and the other uh, agencies that are, are possibly here. And it makes it easier for us um, uh, to be able to uh, uh, ascertain funding from FEMA uh, just in case any type of expenditures that we may have uh, in addressing any type of emergency uh, cases throughout uh, the city. I want to make it uh, very clear that there is no uh, cases that have been declared of coronavirus uh, in the city of Baldwin Park or from uh, the hospitals that are in Baldwin Park uh, as well. So just want to let everyone know. So we're gathered here uh, to be able to receive uh, information. I, I do want to say this afternoon I attended a, um, uh, an actual meeting um, um, at St. Francis Medical Center. Uh, the, clinic, the actual physician stated that the actual coronavirus itself is more contacted through droplet and it's not airborne. So that just came around from my understanding maybe about five or six hours ago. So just want to let everyone know. So it's important again to uh, uh, <clears throat> make sure that we're not touching, shaking hands or hugging or if you are sick, of course, uh, cover your, your mouth and uh, you know practice uh, a good hygiene to be able to protect others. And I know it's not only challenging here, I could only imagine in the school, 21 schools with literally Hundreds, hundreds and, uh, or thousands of students in general. So I want to let everyone know. And I believe that Mr. Daniel Rodriguez uh, will be leading this. Uh, at this point, real quick, just want to also acknowledge uh, uh, from the Baum Park Unified School District, uh, Mr. Santos, thank you for being here. Um, and Dr. Freudian, Superintendent, and Dr. Salazar as well. Did I miss anyone else from the school district? Oh, Marina, yes, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for being here today as well. So and also from the Valley County Water District, we have Mr. Javier Vargas and also, am I missing anyone else? Uh, plan, huh? David oh, Mr. David Muse, yes. And also newly appointed former council member, Ms. Marlene H. Garcia. Oh, no, you don't have a middle name. That's right. I, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being here, uh, Marlene. All right, so at this point, I'm going to give the... Uh, the actual uh, mic over to our, our, our CEO, Ms. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Mayor and Not members of the City Council and public. Um, before the City Council tonight is a proclamation of a local state of emergency. Uh, as the Mayor touched on, this allows the City uh, to streamline our processes uh, in planning for this outbreak uh, so that we can be ready. It also will help us uh, in the event that there's uh, monies that can be reimbursed to the city from state or federal agencies. It will allow us uh, to also go through that process. So that is before you tonight. And I know there's a lot of questions of the city council, but I'd like to have the police chief um, speak a little bit about what's going on. Um, it's a little bit different than a lot of disasters um, that we're used to, earthquakes and floods, um, where the infrastructure is damaged. Here we have... Um, a process where the actual um, problem is that the people and the staffing um, and are, are sick and can't go to work. So that's something that um, I'm meeting with all the staff on daily. Things are changing hourly. Um, we're planning on to, uh, uh, how to keep the police department and the city running and to staff all of those essential services. Um, so I'll go ahead and let um, Chief Steve McLean uh, talk about that briefly. Yes, Hold on, Mayor. thank you, CEO, uh, Mr. Yatsi. Real quick, forgot to take the roll call. Uh, so at this point, we'll ask the clerk, Ms. Jean M. Ayala. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Monica Garcia. Here. Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. He will, he will not be present. Council Member Alejandra Avila. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Paul Hernandez. Present. And Mayor Emanuel Lozano. Aki, excuse me, here. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm going to make a motion to excuse uh, Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. That is my motion. 
Second. Second. Any objections? Seeing none, so moved. I want to also, real quick, also acknowledge uh, Ms. Deanna Robles that just walked in from the Baum Park Unified School District. Uh, Ready? All right, so at this point, we'll go ahead and give the mic over to um, Mr. Steve uh, McLean, our, our police chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to assure the public that all the stakeholders uh, have been meeting nonstop in the last 24 hours. The amount of information that has been coming in and as fast as it has been coming in has really been crazy. Since this morning, I've been at one meeting with all the chiefs of police in San Gabriel Valley. We sent Daniel Rodriguez over to the county this morning and he'll give an in-depth briefing. Uh, but I want you to know that we're in contact and coordinating with all the stakeholders. For example, I've spoken to the superintendent just twice just today. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to know that we are communicating. The department heads have been meeting all week. We just came from a meeting. And so with that, I would like to call up and commend Daniel Rodriguez, who's been running to all the county meetings. He'll come up and get a, a basic briefing. Currently, we're working on a coronavirus response plan. And like I said, the information that's coming in is dynamic and it's fluid. So I'm hoping by Monday we'll have a specific coronavirus response plan that will address all the questions that you have. And for those of you who want information, I'd like to refer you to the city website and to the LA County uh, publichealth.gov. Any question that you would have regarding the coronavirus will be on those websites. It is your best source for information. So I encourage you to go to those websites. Thank you, Daniel. So good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor, distinguished members of City Council. <laughs> so I just want to give you a little uh, uh, recap with regards to the proclamation that you guys have in front of you. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, this this proclamation is truly to uh, making sure that we're in line with what Los Angeles County Office of Emergency Management has done and ultimately what the governor of the state of California have done. So the governor obviously declared a state of emergency. Uh, the county uh, supported the LA County Department of Public Health emergency. And basically uh, things have been unfolding by the day. So after today's uh, Area D disaster management um, emergency committee meeting that we had, and for those of you that do not know DMAC or would like to know a DMAC, um, we have a disaster management area coordinator that is in charge of the 22 cities in the San Gabriel Valley. And basically, uh, that's our liaison between the county and then um, between the county and the state or the operational area of the state. So with that said and done, um, we have been meeting uh, probably the last three days, the executive team and myself, uh, in creating uh, policy and creating plans and figuring out where we go and what we need to do. But after today's meeting that I went to today, uh, it was highly recommended that we uh, consider declaring a local state of emergency so that we're not on the back end and that we can um, basically speed up whatever processes, procurement processes, and things that we need to um, track and monitor for potential reimbursement in the future. So as of this, uh, as of yesterday afternoon, the chief and I have been working, uh, brainstorming together. Um, as of today, we have assigned uh, the chief of police, myself, and Officer Jim Izzo are the three duty officers that will be um, monitoring this situation um, from here on out. Um, our EOC that was normally set up in our police station is going to be uh, located, relocated to the ARC Center on the second floor boardroom conference room. And uh, the reason for that is there's, there's AV uh, technology there, there's conferencing there, there's uh, proper facilities there, and uh, it's an area that is away from everything where we can focus on the response and recovery and the public awareness for all of our residents. And then lastly, uh, we did a, a large campaign with pushing out information on all city websites, uh, the city's website, the police department's website, the social media. And what we're asking residents to do, and we're going to be updating that today, is we're asking residents to download the app, um, the, um, the CDC app on your phone, both for Android and Google Play, as well as the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health app 
both of those you can subscribe to and get real-time information on because I know right now you're reading a lot of things and a lot of different sources and websites and things that are coming on this is direct and first-hand knowledge information that is coming through and then in the days to come and over the weekend we're going to be preparing a, an, an operation plan on a plan of action for a pandemic as well as uh, specifically to address the coronavirus so with that said and done if council has any questions I'd be more than happy to answer um, or if the audience has any questions I'd be more than happy to answer whatever I can answer all righty uh, just to, well, first of all thank you uh, Daniel for taking the opportunity chief as well for being uh, uh, proactive in, in addressing some of the issues and of course that would uh, concern and safeguard our community um, <clears throat> the um, question that I had so what 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 are what is the county uh, of course I guess the governor did here this afternoon was what no meetings more than 250 or gatherings or something to that effect it's the recommendation that was his recommendation yes okay. and and from my uh, professional opinion um, in emergency management um, I have a feeling come Monday it's going to be all events no matter if it's five or ten people only because of how this has been unfolding by the minute uh, New York has activated the National Guard things are changing by the moment and there's been some rumor that they're looking to lock down uh, different borders they're looking to lock down uh, all operations sooner than later for approximately a two-week period has been a rumor again it's just a rumor but these are things that we just have to be ready for and we have to have that uh, plan of action or that uh, contingency plans in place and that's something that we're working on with uh, Shannon the chief uh, HR and all the executive team yeah and I'm glad you mentioned at the same time also we, we don't want to send a, a panic notice uh, to the community it's important working at a hospital and of course <clears throat> I mean you, you you go through so much different type of training of course this is brand new so everyone is learning as, as we go on but I'm, we, we reassure our community that we're not in a panic stage I mean individuals that are going through these markets and buying off the toilet papers can't figure out why but 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 nevertheless I mean they're just things that we need to take and and, and deliver the message in a, in a professional way and in a calm way as, as opposed to being reactionary about anything because we don't want this community uh, to partake in that type of scenario because this is not it's not it's it's when you make errors and, and when when issues uh, uh, arise that are it could be critical to our community so but I want to make certain that when we are uh, um, sending the messages out that we're not doing it in a panic and a panic motion yeah. but, uh, and uh, yes uh, council member Monica Garcia yeah I the way that I see this is you know we have our public health in the, right. in the city of Baldwin Park and we have our public safety and I'm I'm glad that you are at the forefront of that and in constant communication and thank you for the updates we've been receiving them for a few months now so you know thank you for that and so I do have confidence that we are working within the channels you know of the county and then you know um, the state is has now become more active so I, I definitely see that there is the public health public safety aspect but you know one of the concerns that I recently expressed was in the city um, we have we offer programs where you know we were planning our state of the city address and I just what I'm seeing is you know as as you mentioned Daniel um, you know there are institutions that are major institutions and they're just shutting everything down and because you know there are, are mass numbers that gather for you know some of these events um, we don't have those numbers here but I do think that just to be overly cautious and and because there's an opportunity to get ahead of this right now and to to be very preventative um, I want to know and I'd like us to have a conversation here amongst all of us um, if we should go ahead and just suspend our programs or, or you know I mean as much as I would hate to do that because I know that our residents will love the programs um, but just for public health sake and to be very preventative does it make sense to shut down you know our programs for two weeks um, I'm hearing you know like the universities have done that I'm, I'm hearing LUSD may do that you know beginning um, the, over the next couple of days 
And so then that leads me to the question of, you know, how are we also in, in communication with our school district? And any cases or any potential cases that could be happening within our school district? Because I don't know if it's a rumor, but I understand that there were some children who returned to school after being quarantined for 14 days. And um, so... I don't know, you know, it's just, it's important to know, like, what is the, what's actually happening in our community, um, working with the school district, working with, you know, other public agencies within our, within our city, not panicking, right, just keeping the communication flowing, more, more, more than anything. Yeah. Um, so I, I would look at, like, what programs, you know, are we, do we want to suspend and then also, what are some of the protocols that we're following internally here within our organization? You know, so we have a lot of outward facing staff, you know, dealing, I mean, we serve the public here. So what are some of the protocols, you know, to, for preventative measures with them? I mean, are there, are there any specific equipment, you know, that is being considered or you know, like I think, Shannon, you mentioned when somebody shows up sick or with some symptoms, like how are we responding to that immediately? So, so to answer your question, and they're all very good questions, um, we did not come here today. Um, it was very difficult to even be here today to actually make that recommendation to declare a local state of emergency only because we wanted not to create any panic. And we're not creating panic, it's just we want to be at a, at a, at a preparedness stage. Um, after the meeting that I went to today and the county made the recommendations they made, um, the prior meetings that we had with Shannon and the executive team, we just, we just really took it day by day and we were really wanting to see what was happening, what was unfolding. Mm -hmm. And those were some of the things that we discussed with some of the events uh, yesterday, the day before, and even today as well. So those in general, and Shannon can correct me if I'm incorrect, but those in general, um, some programs may have to be canceled, but there's also some programs that we're going to look at and see what happens on a day-to-day -day basis and not letting it also extend for a long time. For example, if we have a rental in the city and it's a wedding reception and they have 150 people, we don't know where their guests is, are coming from. So we have to also take that into consideration as well. Um, so some of the internal components of what we're planning to do and what we have in the works is we're preparing um, information, packet of information that would be disseminated in addition to what we've already sent internally to all of our employees. So all department heads are gonna be responsible to do a tailgating meeting come Monday and Tuesday with all their employees, just letting them know what we're doing, what preventative measures we're taking, and how we're helping them as well. And not only is this for full-time staff, but this is also part-time staff as needed staff. So we're looking at all the staff across the board, and then we'll, and then we'll look at adjusting uh, those policies and procedures as we feel fit that would best benefit the interest of the city. And I can just add a few things to that. Um, as far as rumor control, we're trying to keep right on top of that. Um, Daniel and I have been told by the health department that if there's any case in Baldwin Park, I will personally be the first one to know before the media or anybody else. So that means the city council is going to be the next people to know. So, um, and I, we're also in direct um, communications daily uh, with Froyland and the school district. Um, as far as the city facilities, um, this room, public counters, they're being, uh, public counters are being sterilized daily. Um, meeting rooms like this before and after meetings. Um, we do have special equipment to be able to do that. We have enough supplies to be able to do that. And um, then we've been sending out messages to our staffing over the last few weeks. Um, and again, as the chief and Daniel have said, things are changing uh, by the hour. So we're actually um, gonna be updating that um, over time with, with, and what we're doing is we're referring people and a lot of questions that you get 
we recommend you refer people to the CDC website because it tells you exactly what to mm -hmm. do. They have a list of different professions that you're in and, and what you can do for that profession. We don't give le we don't give medical advice. We're not doctors, so. Um, but if you go on those websites, um, it talks about the social distancing, um, canceling trips like cruise ships, obviously, not shaking hands, washing your hands for 20 seconds with hot soap and water. Um, covering your mouth when you sneeze, washing your hands immediately, you know, disposing of that tissue. So those are the things um, that we're referring people to, including our staff. Um, we've had staff that we've asked, um, you know, if, if you're sick or coughing, please stay home. Uh, we're working closely with HR on policies and to be prepared. A lot of this right now is just to be prepared um, <clears throat> to have things in place. And this resolution gives us the power to do those things, to institute if we need to, a telecommuting policy for uh, non-essential staff. If their kids' schools close and they need to stay home, we can allow them to telecommute um, to take the burden off them. So there's various things that we're looking at being very flexible with the staff. We need to keep the city essential operations running, but we also need to um, um, be flexible with the staff and their time and, and, and their work hours. Shannon, I have a question. Um, I know we're talking about that you're sending out the information via social media or they can log on the website. We have a lot of seniors that don't have access to the website or don't even know how to log on to the website. So how are we getting that information out to them? What are we going to do to make sure that they're informed since they don't have the access? Also, um, I'm sure we can discuss this uh, with time. What are we going to do if something wants to happen with our homeless population? How are we going to handle that situation since they will be out and about? There are really no place for them to be contained. So those type of questions and conversations, I would like more information on. So, so Dan, let, let, let me start because Daniel can add more and I think Manny can add more, but um, they are giving information out to the seniors. Um, we've taken the CDC posters in, is it five languages? Uh, and four, putting four, four languages. languages and yes. we're posting those throughout our facility um, in all of the areas. We're actually probably going to recommend that we close the senior center, although we're working on a program to, to convert the lunch program uh, to meals, uh, meals, on wheels? a By delivery wheels. program. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So a delivery program. Mm -hmm. And, and the reason for that is because when you go to the CDC website, it says seniors are recommended to stay home. This yes. coronavirus is affecting seniors. The CDC is recommending that they stay home and that they not go out and socialize. So we don't want to create an atmosphere that encourages them to come to get together and socialize. So, um, we're actually talking about probably doing that in the next day or two. Okay, I know also the Women's Club is going to be having an event sometime next week. Will that include them as well? Uh, y yes, the Women's Club actually reached out to myself and the chief and invited us to their dinner reception. So we do have that on our schedule. We'll be doing a presentation there, taking literature. In addition to that, uh, starting Monday, the chief and myself will be visiting uh, uh, any and all long-term, short-term care facilities, um, uh, caring homes, houses, and how we compiled that list is we went to the um, business uh, division on the second floor and anyone who registered or paid for a license, which there was a list of about, I believe it was about 10, maybe a few less or a few more. So we're going to plan on personally visiting each and every one of those locations that would be the highest prone to get them the information uh, printed information and those that are tech savvy then we could assist them with getting that on uh, social media or internet or etc so that was a plan of action that uh, we've been working on this week and what can you tell me about the homeless population how are we going to get the information to them so with regards to the homeless uh, population of the homeless program Los Angeles County Department of Public Health has a task force that is going around and they've assessed this task force through uh, LASA, and basically they're going around and they're doing the community outreach and engagement because they're also um, 
LA County OEM had a mandate to like find something along the lines like 2,000 homes, I believe, or temporary housing for the homeless population, being the fact that they're one of three highest prone uh, that can basically um, uh, 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 contain or that can uh, get this uh, virus and then spread it as well. So um, again, we felt that it'd be best to basically leave that up to LA County Public Health at this time since they already had a task force in place and they've been taking the lead on it. And so do we know when they're gonna be out in this area? They're tasked to inform our homeless population. It's a very large population, so just curious on when they'll be out here. Uh, I do not know that, and, uh, and I should have asked that question, but I will, ask, I will ask that tomorrow and find okay. out. Okay, thank you, Daniel. All right, at this point, uh, Councilmember Hernandez, uh, Vice Mayor Hernandez. Did you want to say? Thank you. I uh, appreciate a lot of the information that you provided, Daniel, and uh, again with the chief and everything else. One thing I would ask is as you're creating the EOC is to also add a seat if, uh, or make available, extend an offer uh, to the school district. Um, considering, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of population or young population there exists for us. Um, one of the things that I am concerned with is as we, you know, discuss about closing programs and so forth, especially on the school district, and the, our, our colleagues over there will certainly know this, is it creates a massive uh, daycare issue, um, which then tr trickles down to the parents who then have to stay home, um, that many of them, you know, if you look at our geographics and our makeup of our community, um, these sometimes are not uh, necessarily have uh, extended, um, you know, paid leave uh, situations. So we certainly want to make sure that we're looking at that and working with them uh, together. Um, you know, I know in the past uh, when LAUSD did have the bomb scare about a year or two years ago, that became a very big significant issue. Um, I know the city was able to open up the rec and parks and do something like that differently. Um, so, you know, and I also, my understanding is also uh, the city of Los Angeles is not closing down their senior centers at this time. Um, even as of early as today. Um, and I believe that's also the same case with LA County uh, OEM. Um, is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes. Perfect. Um, again, you know, I would ask for each of us to kind of look at this, um, you know, and rely on our staff to kind of look at this on a day-to-day -day basis because this is very a fluid uh, incident. I understand the concerns and everything that we're hearing in the news and the media because if you look at the, if you look at the pictures on social media and everything else, you know, there's a whole run of uh, individuals, you know, thousands of people showing up at Costco in the mornings uh, <laughs> for water and toilet paper, That's which true. you know, again. Uh, amazes me, but uh, you know our water is clear, and uh, you know there's other ways of cleaning ourselves if we have to in those dire <laughs> circumstances. Um, but again, I would just ask that uh, you know we look at you know creating a, also a unified message with our colleagues from the school district and also with the water districts. Um, one thing that I'd like for us to all have is basically one unified message across the board. So whatever each of us push mm -hmm. out through our own individual social medias, along with our colleagues that are outside, it's one consistent message um, with various resources. So that way there's no mixed uh, signals going across the board um, for us. Um, and that's, you know, we, we certainly have a, a staff member or we have a consultant that can certainly help us with that, um, that could help us with what that's going on with there. Um, and with that, we'll just kind of continue on. To address that, um, um, very good points, uh, and I think Shannon could chime in on this. Um, well, first, with regards to the school district and our stakeholders, our public utilities, uh, we've been in contact with them. Um, very close contact, myself personally, with Michelle, the COO at Kaiser, and her folks there. Um, Edison today reached out to me. Um, after I sent them an email asking them what their continuity of operations was. So they reached out to us. And uh, later on today, I will be sending the council. They created a direct number inside line only for elected officials and council members um, for this particular incident. And I'll share that with all of you that I just got this afternoon at about 430. So I'll share that with you. And then uh, to, ask, uh, to answer your question regarding the school district, uh, we actually have a, a, a task force meeting uh, next Wednesday with the school district, myself, the chief, and Shannon. So we'll be in attendance with them. Uh, and with regards to sen all sending out the same message, uh, internally, that's what the E-team uh, decided to ultimately do, where we're creating one memo with all directors, everyone's initial, 
everyone sending out the same message so that we're all very transparent, but also someone from the third floor doesn't come down to the first saying, I heard this or I heard that. It's one memo, one packet, it's a tailgate kind of meeting, and basically uh, one message is very important. Streamlining that process is extremely important. So uh, thank you very much, Councilmember Hernandez, or um, Mayor Chairman Hernandez. Appreciate that. Uh, one other thing too is if we could work with HR to also remind our staff um, uh, that they are DSWs, uh, yes. disaster service workers, and what that means to them. Because <coughs> um, again, we certainly want to be mindful of uh, folks and the illness and things of that nature, but we also need to make sure that we have the appropriate staff or the most essential staff needed um, as we either gear up, gear down, however the case may be on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that's something very important for all of us. And as Council Member Garcia mentioned, um, you know, the flex staff, you know, as we look at the continuity operation planning, you know, what does that look like, not only for us, but for our part-time staff members, okay. right? Um, if we were to, you know, shut down certain, some of these uh, programs or whatever the case may be, what are we going to do with those staff? You know, obviously, I think uh, Shannon mentioned earlier to me that we would be shifting folks over because, again, uh, you know, this also then becomes an economic hit uh, to individuals, and I'm very concerned about that because people need to make rent, people need to make their car payments. Uh, just because we have this, <coughs> excuse me, this uh, novel event going on, uh, those payments do not stop, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes, um, so and, we want to make sure about that. Yes, and to answer that question. Um, that was a question that did come up with the E-Team, and that is something that we plan not to stop. We need all hands on deck, whether you're part-time or as needed. Um, if we don't have something for you here, we can use you elsewhere. So you may be teaching an arts program, but the next day you may be putting paper in the copier. You know what? We need those staff. So whether you're part-time, uh, part-time staff is, is going to be very essential for us during this time. So that is something that we all we all did talk about. Uh, disaster service workers uh, is uh, under the California Civil Code. And for those of you in the audience that are unaware of that, disaster service worker in a nutshell is uh, any employee that receives or is paid by a public entity is required to uh, continue operating, whether it's here or whether it's in their city because they can't get here, they still have to contribute one way or another to the public municipality. Uh, so whether if they live, if someone lives in Rancho Cucamonga and they can't get here, they can check in at Rancho Cucamonga with the city and therefore their time will still be paid and compensated accordingly. But it's their, it's a mandate, not by the city, it's a mandate by the state of California civil code that they're declared a dis disaster service worker. So that is a great point, something that I completely forgot uh, but we will include that information in the literature we're putting out to everybody on Monday, and that would be on the front page of that. All right, thank I, you. I could, Mayor, in, in, yes, Councilmember Alejandra, go ahead. I also want to add that the school district has been really good at sending out information to all the employees regularly, so we're constantly being informed, also to our families. So information has, has been sent out, and I know Daniel has been in communication with the school district, but I would like to hear from the school district as well um, to see what else they would like to add and give us information on, please. We've been uh, regular, well, first of all, good evening, Mayor, uh, Council members, um, and thank you for inviting us here. I do want to thank um, Chief McLean, um, Mr. Yautzi and, and Daniel Rodriguez, who have uh, all reached out to me uh, to make sure the district has been involved in, in everything that we're doing. Um, so we have been regularly been involved in telebriefings at least two or three times a week with the Los Angeles County Office of Education, along with, um, with members of the Department of Public Health. And so anything that we do is based off of the guidance that we're receiving from them. Um, so what we are doing now is taking some precautionary measures, just making sure that um, our community understands that we are doing everything possible to ensure their health and safety. Um, for instance, what we're doing right now in the school district, uh, we're making sure that we are doing our regular cleaning, making sure that we're disinfecting on a daily basis in terms of our, our classrooms and making sure that we are looking at high-touch areas, um, 
lights, water fountains, we're looking at computer keyboards and such. And then we are also purchasing equipment so that we can do deep disinfection on a weekly basis. So those are some of the preventative aspects that we're doing in the school district. But we are also, based off of the guidance that we're getting from the Los Angeles County Office of Education, we are, we are taking some steps to take preventative measures in terms of, in terms of large gatherings, um, looking at open houses, we're looking at assemblies, we're looking at field trips that may be going to areas that may be considered um, a, a hazard uh, or a, a concern. So we've already sent out a memo um, indicating that we are you know, canceling or postponing those particular uh, events. Uh, for instance, we were supposed to have the BPUSD showcase and we knew that it was gonna rain and more, more likely than not, we would have been inside the gym with about 800, 500, 800 people. At that point in time, we made an executive decision to postpone the BPUSD showcase. So we are doing quite a few things on what we would like to continue to do is to collaborate with the city uh, to make sure that we are, are, are all on the same page as we do our messaging. Um, and I'm just glad that you are having this meeting and continuing to reach out to the district so that we can make sure that we are sending out the same message. I thank you very much, Dr. Pring. And any Mayor. Uh, Council Member Monica Garcia. I just want to go back and um, talk about the city programs. You know, I do see this as a really critical time for getting ahead of, you know, <laughs> what potentially could be in our community. And so I really want us to think about suspending some of these programs, you know, like, um, and I, and I hate to see that because I know how much our seniors love like their, their monthly lunches and their dances and, but this is to, in their best interest, this is, you know, they are a, a very vulnerable population with regard to the coronavirus. And so I do feel that Right now would be the time. If we were going to take any action like this, let's do it right now because it's preventative, right? And, and we're seeing different institutions respond. Um, like you said, Daniel, on a, every day it's, there's a new development. And so I feel like if we're going to take any you know, drastic action, let's do it now while we're still ahead of, of all of this. Um, and then we can see where we are in a couple of weeks, see where, you know, where the county is, a state, nation. But I really do feel strongly that we should suspend these, you know, group programs. And, and it does, you know, I say that because it does, I don't want to do that. But, of course, you know, I want to put public health and public safety ahead of anything here. And I think that it's, it's serious enough. Um, I agree that we shouldn't send any panic. And if we are going to be adopting this emergency, state of emergency um, ordinance, I think that we need to package it. We need to look at how we package this and communicate it so that people don't go into a panic, you know, so that they know why we're doing these things. And it's all for preventative measure right now. Um, you know, and then we can also perhaps communicate this. I mean, it would be nice if uh, David Vela was part of this effort. He actually is on uh, the internet listening. I oh, asked good. him to listen in so that he could help us prepare a press release immediately. Great. So he is on the line. Yes, <laughs> because I, I do think that, um, you know, getting the word out to the public through, like you said, social media are... Um, our, our website, our whatever channels we have here at the city, including the newsletter. You know, I don't know if there's an opportunity for us to have a special newsletter, but I think it would be appropriate. And again, to really communicate why the city is doing this. The reason why the city is doing this is not so that everybody can go out and panic and, you know, it's not doomsday. It's really to pr prepare the city so that, you know, should we need to pursue resources that it's at our disposal. And um, people just need, should know that. I think David could help us with, you know, uh, uh, communication 
in collaboration with all the agencies. And, and I think that the community would also like to see that there are different messages from the city. Well, the same message, right? But coming from the city, coming from the school district, coming from the water agency. Um, because everybody's running out and getting w bottled water. And, um, you know, it'd be nice for the water agency to also step in and to say, you know, we want to reassure you that our water is in good supply and, you know, and it's clean and it's drinkable and all of that, right? So, again, it's, it's all of that. It's like packaging the, um, the communication so that we don't promote the panic. But I, I really would like us to, to consider suspending these programs for two weeks. Well, let me, well, <clears throat> first of all, I, I think that if we are, as was mentioned earlier, you have other, the city of Los Angeles uh, uh, still has their, their various recreational uh, facilities still open. I think maybe giving our seniors at least a week, sometime next week, allowing them to kind of uh, take that in. Uh, they're dependent upon that senior citizen center on an everyday basis, Monday through Friday. Uh, so it's like it's like a it's like a secondary home for them. But I, and I I, re I definitely realize what you're saying. <clears throat> I think for us, so that we communicate it to them uh, in the process, Manny Carrillo, uh, somehow so that we're that they're able to at least comprehend. And then uh, everyone knows about it. It's all over the uh, all over the, the TV media and so on and so forth. Is somehow deliver that message to them in, in, in such type of manner so that they understand. Why the city, as you mentioned right now, the preventative measures that we're taking to be able to secure and safeguard all our seniors as well. So, Manny, what suggestions would you have, sir? I mean, how many seniors gather up there to eat the breakfast and lunch? I've been it's always packed. For, for the lunch program, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council, we have approximately 75 participants to 100 on a daily basis. And uh, we have folks in the pool, the weight room, right. the... Um, the billiards area, the the ping pong area, arts and crafts. We have uh, adult school district programs at the uh, senior center as as well. So in one particular room, we probably have up to seventy five people in one specific room at one time. So so it's gonna it's definitely going to be a, a a major hit for the seniors that are so accustomed to being there. And I've spoken to some of them who tell me this is their home. This is their secondary home. And I realize, so there, I think that we need to figure out a way to be able to deliver the message and, and explain to them, obviously, what's transpiring. And uh, then, I guess, consider, consider the, the two-week uh, uh, closure of the facility to see uh, where, where the actual uh, coronavirus is at at that specific time. Mayor? Yes. I agree with Ms. That. Garcia, and since our seniors are the most vulnerable, and um, they are at our community center at all those facilities, and although we say, or uh, Los Angeles has not shut down any of the facilities, uh, we shouldn't necessarily wait to see what Los Angeles is doing. The mayor of Seattle uh, went on and spoke last night that if they wouldn't have waited so long to do exactly that, maybe the the spread of the corona wouldn't have been so so hardly hit there in Seattle. So taking preventative measures like this, and again informing the community the reason why, like Ms. Garcia said, so that they're not in a panic. I'm sure they'll appreciate it more that we are doing <laughs> this because we are doing it to protect them. So I, I couldn't agree with her more. Yeah, and I think that if so, then why don't we allow that at least to continue on all the way up to next week? And then from there, deliver the message either uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, and then the following week thereafter, then go into the week, into the two week period that's been suggested. Can we ask our director about yes. like, his thoughts on that? That's, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, it, it's a very delicate situation because I realize as a city, we want to try to uh, help control this epidemic. but. A lot of the seniors at our facilities rely on the social interaction as well as a hot meal at the facility. Okay. So it's a it's a very uh, difficult situation. I'd also like to bring to the council's attention that we are having reservations at the facility. For example, tomorrow we have a 200 plus. Um, you know, services. reception for a, a funeral and on Saturday we have a 80th birthday party mm -hmm. so we do have uh, a facility 
uh, sometimes operating seven days a week. And we do have staff going in to disinfect and everything else. Uh, but we uh, have commitments to the community as a uh, rental. So if that should change down the road, we would need to give our residents some time to find an alternative uh, facility and or location. Thank you. Um, again, just to continue with this conversation, are we also looking at uh, postponing also the youth programming or are we just looking at the senior programming? I think it's all encompasses that because if it's part that it takes place in the community center, then there's, I mean, we have to think I, about, exactly. we have to think about this a lot deeper than just the seniors, because again, we have, you know, as, as uh, our director and others have mentioned, you know, we have a, a segment of our population mm -hmm. that are less likely to be affected by this, right? Um, that use this facility on a daily basis and all the way into the evening. So again, my concern is, you know, what are we going to do with them or what all alternatives are we going to do with them? Mm -hmm. um, if it's for a short period of time, I understand that. And I'm, you know, I'm open to that, to that discussion. Um, but again, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, not taking action is sometimes the best action. Um, I'm not saying that mm -hmm. that is the case right now, but it is something that we should think about because again, uh, you know, there's, I know some of our neighboring cities have taken some of this action. Um, as of yesterday or today, I think there was two local cities. Um, so, you know, there, there is some, there is a valid argument to do that. Um, you know, if we're looking for a short period of time, um, you know, I'm open to that discussion, but again, I would like to also make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, we give our directors the, the opportunity to make that decision um, as we're going forward on this on a day-to-day -day basis. Because again, what we're talking about today might look a, a lot different from a week mm -hmm. from now. And of course, you know, we could certainly take those, those steps then. Um, and with regards to Seattle, uh, that is a whole different situation there um, in which they're Got facing. Away. There's a completely different situation than what we're looking at. Um, you know, considering the number of uh, affected individuals in a population of 11 million people, um, you know, the numbers do not compare from us to, the, to them. And hopefully we don't get anywhere near there. That's the idea. We don't want it to <laughs> But compare. again, uh, that's all based on the travel of individuals. That has nothing mm -hmm. to do with, you know, what we're doing necessarily per, to some degree. Um, so uh, again, you know, I just want to be very clear. Are we talking about all the programs that we're working, that, that, facilitate, that are facilitated there? And are we also looking at everywhere else in our programs? Because again, we're taking this action and, you know, we have other institutions that are still active, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So are we also asking for those other institutions to also take similar actions? Because um, then really, we're not really doing anything unless it's really? a unified, <laughs> unless then, it's unified. I have a so, question, Mr. Mendoza, are the sporting events still happening at our school district? We're still getting guidance from CIF in okay. regards to that. Um, but what I'm hearing out there is they may still do the sports without spectators. Okay. Okay, so that's an, another thing because we do collaborate. We do have after-school sports through our city at your schools. For right now, example, is football season, and there is a lot of spectators when, for example, at elementary schools, the parents come here to the park to watch the game. So that's why uh, if we collaborate with the school district, so when that decision is made at your level, because it is your students that are playing at our park after school, so we can be working together and doing that at the same time. Absolutely, that would be beneficial. and that uh, goes along with the facilities use permit, and I think that's uh, basically what um, Manny was kind of talking about in terms of even with the city. So we were going to have to take a look at that in regards to further guidance from DPH, um, and hopefully they'll provide us with some clear guidance. Mm -hmm. And we're holding fast to the, the guidance that we're getting from uh, LACO and also DPH, so that if there are any questions whatsoever in regards to what we're doing, we can always back it up with the guidance that we're getting. Um, and just to, um, I was just speaking to Daniel um, really quickly in regards to the length of time. Just because we're suspending and postponing particular events, that doesn't mean that it's forever. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've indicated in our memo is that, um, that we would continue to do this until the end of spring break. Uh, which would be April 19th. 
Um, and there, there, at that point in time, we can continue to assess the situation to see whether or not we can pull back on some of these things that we've already put in place. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Here, if I could just yes. um, address right. the youth services and just let you know the discussions that we've been having because we've been talking about that. And each of those programs is a little bit different. Um, and we're really looking at the guidance that's coming from the health department and the governor right now. And the guidance and the recommendation is for, um, uh, you, you know, for uh, gatherings upwards of 250, 250. people. So yeah. a lot of the classes, we have arts, arts and craft classes, dance classes at this point. We didn't plan on, um, you know, those are small groups. We didn't plan on on discontinuing those at this point. And I, and I think that the, about the 250, I mean, if you look at the seniors, if there's 75, there's not 250. It's not even close. I don't think there's no area from within that, from, from in the center where they're all gathered in one specific area. So, and, and as Council Member, Vice Mayor uh, uh, Power Hernandez had mentioned, I mean, you, it's gonna, going to literally affect a lot of different uh, areas there as uh, our youth and what have you so I, I at this point I, I simply will say maybe allow it for one week and assess it and see what what the county and the country is, is like as far as addressing the, uh, this particular um, um, coronavirus and, and kind of go from there and I think by the middle of next week we'll know um, if we'll have the meal delivery yeah. set up and ready to go mm -hmm. I mean, in other words what we're of course we're gonna take whatever action we need to to be able to uh, um, assist the community and that's the biggest concern I mean we're not clinicians here so obviously we get stuff from the media but uh, being able to kind of look at it and uh, uh, at least give it another week and, and just kind of um, assess and evaluate and then move forward from there from that point I mean School, uh, schools, I mean, you're still, classes are being held. I mean, I know some some colleges and so on and so forth, they've reverted to uh, online classes. I mean, but these are, it's a whole different, uh, it's a whole different uh, uh, perspective from the colleges versus the local uh, unified school districts. So, I mean, you got hundreds and hundreds and, and or thousands of students. I mean, 21 schools. How many students uh, do the, uh, are they in, in total in, in the unified? We're at around 11,500 now. Wow, 11,000. So let's think about that. They're in, um, they're in classrooms. I'm not trying to set an example, but I'm just kind of saying again. There's a there's a large congregation of of, of, of students as well. And it, and if we're, you're looking at at uh, the various uh, entities that uh, provide you general information uh, through the county, I understand that part. But I'm just using a suggestion. Just well, sorry about that, Councilmember. Uh, you Hudson. know, I I I've heard that some institutions were initially looking at a certain size of congregation like okay you know we recommend that any events above x number of people attending um should be canceled and then that came down to like 25 and then and you know some of these institutions like cal state um long beach la usc ucla they just decided let's just shut this down they no longer were working off of the number of attendees they just decided let's just eliminate this and do the telecommuting, right? And so um, as I see that happening more and more, I mean, we're seeing unprecedented, you know, institutions suspending their operations, like, you know, the hockey, NBA, March Madness, all these um, institutions. And this tells me that it's, it's, it's very serious now. You're right, we don't have that mass, and that's what I mentioned earlier. We don't have the mass gathering right. that you would have at these places, but the, but watching their thinking, their kind of, you know, how they went down from 25 now to nothing, that is that signals something to me. And um, But, you know, I hear what you're saying because I do agree that for those seniors that, um, you know, depend on our programs, what I would ask is, if we could identify like the essential versus non-essential programs for seniors and youth, and maybe we can start looking at it that way, you know, um, and then maybe for the essential programs where seniors do depend on the city to provide those meals, you know, how we would how we would substitute that with the meals and on wheels program. If it's really if it if it is viable, and if it's not viable, then that's part of the conversation too. I think what we're looking for are just, you know, what are real viable considerations here. 
And when I say, you know, any suspension, I'm talking about a couple of weeks because we do have, in our community, we do have people that have traveled, I'm sure. We don't know who's traveled in and out of the country. We don't know who has been um, exposed. And, you know, and so there's no way of us knowing or controlling that. And so I'm just trying to prevent any, like, you know, any exposure or, or, or breeding opportunities, right? Um, but as far as the cities in the area, what I wanted to ask, what cities? West Covina. Has a West Covina. That, what what they have they, what cities wheels. and what have they done? So the cities that I have heard about that have shut down pretty much um, all of the facilities of community or senior center, and I think staff and Daniel can add to this, um, Diamond Bar, San Dimas, El Monte, West Covina, and am I missing any? Arcadia just closed up. Yeah. As but well. it's happening. I mean, I just got the text about San Dimas an hour ago. So it's happening as we're sitting here. Exactly. Yeah. Because so, it, Go ahead. So they are taking those preventive measures because they don't want anything to happen to their residents. And I think that is the point Ms. Garcia is trying to make here. We don't want to compromise anybody. So... We wouldn't hurt anybody, especially the seniors, by shutting down maybe the senior activities uh, for a time being until we go get more information. Because if I remember correctly, you said maybe by Monday the, the number of people that can gather may change to 5 or 10. Things are changing on an hourly basis pretty much, correct? So by putting these preventive measures in place for our seniors, we which are the most vulnerable at this time, I think will will help us maybe start with that if all possible. Yeah. Uh, so and maybe a compromise is to um, try to get this meal program up by maybe Tuesday or Wednesday next week, and once we get that, um, we have a better assessment on what's going on, and we can make that mm -hmm. decision. Yeah, and I, and I, I I think so. I think that would be best for us to be able to assess and evaluate and kind of determine. Well, we have a city council next next week next week, Mike Rex, uh, Wednesday. So maybe we could look at that uh, during study session and, and and go from there. Have some recommendations. Yes, and again, you know, well, certainly you want to be do what's best. I mean, what hospitals are doing, they're literally asking you prior to going in, have you traveled within the past ten days? Have you? Or if you're coughing, they'll, they'll give you a, um, um, a face mask and so on and so forth. Whatever the case may be, it's just kind of hard. It's almost like self-reporting, you know. So mm -hmm. you, you, regardless, you're gambling. You're gambling every everywhere. I mean, right, right in this part, in, in this room as well. So we have to also remember that it's almost an impossible type of task. But I understand the preventative measures. There's no doubt. They they should be and they are universal. But and yes. things uh, we're monitoring things. They're changing daily. So if you know if the order comes out this weekend to close every facility, this is the resolution. If you pass uh, pass this, it allows us to go ahead and do that and comply with that order without having to bring it back to you on Wednesday. So we'll be monitoring it, yeah. and if we need to take that action, we can. All right, sounds good. All right, so at this point, uh, one last thought, uh, Mayor, um, for the seniors that I know a lot of our seniors come from. Like, um, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Manny, the yes. different senior housing, yes. right? The but, different senior housing. And so um, maybe if, if there's any idea that we could like an assessment that we can make of how many seniors that come to our center are from those housing, you know, um, okay. units, developments, and how many would be outside of those housing developments, because that would also factor into the mill delivery right it makes it more yes well more I, efficient. I think in regards to the mill delivery intervail which is the agency that we contract out with via los angeles county um, they will have an answer for us by tuesday or wednesday it appears that they are going to be able to provide a a frozen meal so then it would be our responsibility to make sure we get the meal to the senior and or the senior if they're healthy and able they could come pick it up at the at the facility so we could do something of that nature mm -hmm. maybe it would help just to be able to you know figure out like the uh, the addresses of these seniors i'm sure we have a lot of that information available to us to see if they belong to any one of these, um, yes. like GNK or Teleku or you know what I'm talking about? Yes, absolutely. 
So it makes it more viable. It makes it more sustainable for us to, to be able to deliver a program like that, right? Yes. All right. I have and, another question. Yes, go ahead. So you said we were providing the information to our seniors. Is this at the senior center, or are we taking this information to the senior homes, to the facilities where they're housing seniors? Okay, like so across the, the street right here. Are we so, taking that information there? So that's going to be uh, 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 both locations. So currently there's information um, at the senior center. However, um, on the business listing on rest homes and convalescent homes, there's 13 in the city. And those 13 is are the 13 that the chief and I plan to visit personally mm -hmm. and provide both handouts in uh, Spanish, English, and Chinese. And these are hard copy handouts that we're, that we're looking to uh, take there. And if we're able to gather in a group and do a little presentation, then we will do that and provide them whatever information and resources we can. What about like Teleq right here across the street? That's a senior, there are senior homes there and all of the other facilities that we have that senior housing, not necessarily rest homes, but it's senior housing. Yeah, that's actually on my list of the 13. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. At this point, I'm, I will go ahead and open up the public communication. Anyone wishing to speak on this subject is welcome to do so. Good evening, Ralph. How are you? Hey, real good. I just wanted, uh, I was in attendance at the uh, Board of Directors meeting uh -huh. on Monday to the Valley County Water District. And uh, General Manager Jose said that the water that we have that comes from the Valley County Water District is safe. It's reliable, so it's okay to, it's okay to drink. I drink from the top, so I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware and as a reminder to the community. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Ralph. Appreciate that. I love that foggy water, and I still drink it. It's, it's the best. <laughs> your ser seriously, it is. It really is. <laughs> I was at Costco's. <laughs> this is funny. And I couldn't believe the, the, how many um, uh, the cars just full of waters and everything's like, what? You know, and uh, the foggy water in Ballpark is good. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and okay. Mayor goes, Everybody prepares differently, so yes, just no, leave I, them alone. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. But the water coming out of those pipes are safe. Mayor, if I could add one point. Ooh. Oh, Mayor. Chief, sorry about that. <laughs> Councilmember Avila brought up, brought up a very good point. Not everybody has computers. Not everybody has access to computers. Some people can't afford computers. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, every one of us has a utility bill. And so what I did in my last job, for example, we had a rash of burglaries. And so we sent out on our utility bill, don't be a victim, lock your cars. So I envision something as simple on our utility bills is learn more about coronavirus, how to protect your family, and just the website. Everybody gets a utility bill, and everybody's got to open uh, that bill. Yeah. Something that simple, just add to all the other social media. Yeah, hey, exactly. And I know that the Valley County Water District has done that before. That Maybe that's something they could Yes, we're able to do right. that both on the trash and the water bills. Oh, that's right. So we'll, 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 all right, so let me, let me go ahead and continue on. Anyone wishing to, wishing to speak? Let me just close up on the, on the subject. Come yeah, on up. Another... Yes, absolutely. Good evening. Good evening, my name is Candace Perez and I'm a resident. And I gotta believe, um, I agree with Monica Garcia and everything she's been saying, and you guys are just all shutting her out. I see you're cutting her short, but our precaution is our residents here, everybody in the community. You guys are not giving her the opportunity, and she's the only one that has the brightest ideas, and nobody's really listening to her. You guys are always talking about the safety of our community and our children and our seniors. Then us as a community take, need to take a precaution and stop and think about, oh, this wait a week or so. No, we don't need to wait a week or so. In a week or so, there could be so many of our residents sick. Like, have you got, you talked about Santa Teresa. Have you talked to a Kaiser Baum Park to see what's going on? We're definitely in contact with them, yes. yes because to my knowledge, yeah. I heard there was people infected there. You know what? Okay, no. when is the last time that you talked to them? Uh, this afternoon. This afternoon, this afternoon, but yes. everything's happening hour by the hour. But I'm going to go go ahead and continue on. I shouldn't be interrupting you, but yes. go ahead. Because that's what you've been doing to this whole meeting. You've been interrupting her and trying to cut her short. Um, but I, you got to agree with her. You talk about our safety in our city. Our children and the elders are very, they're our main concern. It's spreading so quickly. Why are you going to wait a week or so? 
in a week or so, there's, like I said, you don't know where the fellow neighbor works at. They could work in LA. Monrovia was infected. You don't know where they're coming from, where they're working at. You gotta stop and think about it. I would say give it suspended for the day, see what happens over the weekend, and then on Monday you can continue business. But give it suspended at least for a day tomorrow and see what happens. You don't know what's gonna happen. Then Monday, if not, everything's fine, you continue, and then you just take it day by day and see what's going on. Why wait till Wednesday? You don't know what could happen Wednesday. So many could be affected. That is just what I wanna say to our community. And that nobody's here from my community, but I wanna speak up, because I have children. I have an elderly mother who's very ill. I have family in Los Angeles. There's people infected there. So I came today and speak up, because that's what I strongly agree. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak? If not, I want to go ahead and uh, declare the public communication closed. So uh, just to kind of summarize uh, what was stated here is that we're going to allow uh, the uh, one uh, assess and evaluate the following week. And it's important for us to make certain that we obviously don't jump to conclusions and don't panic. Uh, no, Kaiser has not had a case. There hasn't been a case in the neighboring cities as well. Uh, so, and we are doing our best as, as, as the local municipal government, just like the Unified School District and the water agencies, and of course, our community comes first. That's important. We all live here, so we have a vested interest uh, in the city, uh, city of Baldwin Park. So at this point, I will go ahead and um, the, I know that legal counsel had uh, suggested that a couple of things he would like to uh, uh, change or look at in the actual proclamation that we have here. So at this point, I'll give it over to our legal counsel, Mr. Tafoya. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you can imagine, we were drafting this literally uh, a few hours before we came, and there are some changes that I would like to uh, suggest uh, before you uh, consider this uh, proclamation. In the first paragraph, it says, whereas the city of Baldwin Park, County of Los Angeles, State of California, empowers the chief executive officer, the chief of police, or designee to proclaim the existence or threaten existence of a local emergency due, the no due to the novel coronavirus period, and the rest of that uh, sentence will be deleted. Then at the very last paragraph of page one, it should, in the last two paragraphs that have a total of four sentences, it should now read that these conditions are beyond the control of the services, personnel, equipment, and facilities of the City of Baldwin Park, County of Los Angeles, period. The and would be taken out, and then the next uh, paragraph would be removed as well. And those are my recommendations before you consider this proclamation. All righty. Council members, have any questions? If not, I will go ahead and make a motion uh, to pass the local state of emergency. Uh, do come out on uh, 19, so that is my motion. Second. Who's second? Who's second? I don't sound like <laughs> Okay, it was uh, Ms. Alejandra Avila. Uh, yeah. And uh, any objections? See not so moved, so the proclamation uh, has been approved. All right, so at this point, Council Member, have, yes. Uh, yes, yes. I Vice wanted to ask Manny Carillo, um, what are the upcoming events? Like, what are the upcoming city events? We in, have the state of the city. In, uh, that's, in, that's been in terms of large events okay. where we're going to have approximately 250 and more, we have the state of the city on Thursday. March 26th, and I think right now that's probably on a wait and see for next week, uh, if we how that's going to proceed. And then we have our well. Easter egg hunt, which is the and brunch, which is a Saturday before Easter, and I believe that's the 15th or 16th of April on that Saturday. And those are the two large events that I could think of uh, for the next 30 days. We or so. also have the job fair next week, but yes. we expect to announce the postponement of that on Monday. Um, that does draw a large crowd, and we ja actually had a few of the vendors that are attending are pulling out of that too. So expect to see that canceled well, Monday. I would like to what postpone I, what the at this state point, of the at this point, uh, at this point, uh, so will that be postponed? Is that what we're doing? The job fair? Yes. yes. The job fair. So yes. and let's go ahead. And the and state of the city. Excuse me. I have the mic. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, go ahead and, and postpone, as she stated, the, uh, the state of the city as well. There's no need to have that. Save the money there. 
Mayor, Manny. can you yes. possibly do that on TV on Spectrum Channel? Maybe still. Sure. You and I will be there. No, just you. No, seriously. A lot of <laughs> people. Know, yeah, a yeah, lot we of will. people watch yeah. that. Yeah, yeah we've so talked you about. Can still do it. Well, we've talked about filming it and live streaming yes. it, and then we can replay it on our Spectrum. I'll say hi to all you guys. <laughs> Mayor, <laughs> I do have. Yes, go ahead, uh, Councilman Monica. Yes, yeah, Vice um, Mayor. Uh, Hernandez. Appreciate that. Uh, just for clarification for everyone's uh, audience, uh, next week, it's my understanding that we will have Kaiser here doing a presentation. Awesome. Um, so if uh, you're uh, concerned uh, and you want to listen more about what's happening, uh, come to the council next week. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So that will be a presentation at 7 p.m. for the Kaiser. Is my correct? Uh, I believe so, right? Okay, Kaiser thrives. Thank you. And, and if I could add, Mayor, um, anybody who's interested in listening to the council meetings, you can do that also from home, um, streaming on the internet. Um, if you don't want to um, come sit here, you're <laughs> welcome to come. But I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that option. option. As an option. All right. Okay. And so, Mayor, yes, I, I still had some more questions. Okay. So for the events, the special events that are coming up in the next week that um, because I guess we're going to take up this conversation at the next council meeting. Yes. So uh, what are the events that are coming up that would be like, let's say even like 15, 15 25 people or more? We, we have billiards in the mornings, uh, 7 a.m. till about 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. And we'll, we had about 20 folks, 20 members today. We usually have a little bit more, maybe 40-ish. And in ping pong, I found it, uh, I found it interesting that we traditionally have about 50 per ping pong participants. Today we had about a dozen, maybe a little bit, a little bit more. So they're self-regulating okay. uh, or being a little bit more su selective. I saw a lot of people sitting in the well, sitting under the picnic shelter uh, a little bit, a little bit more than usual considering the weather t today. Mm -hmm. So maybe they just wanted some some fresh air. So uh, billiards, ping pong, and yes. In regards to the summer lunch or to the lunch program, we have about fifty to seventy five, and on daily a basis. on a daily basis, on a great day, it's a hundred. Uh, but I would say today we had about sixty two ish, uh, give or take a dozen, um, and uh, that's all. Or you, are there more? There's a few others. Let's see. On Tuesdays, we have bingo. We'll have about 40 participants in one of the rooms. And then we have a few other courses, ESL classes, uh, jewelry making, and some other courses offered through the Ballin Park Unified School District Adult School. Uh -huh. And they have about maybe a dozen students. We have uh, aquatics, and they have about 50 students, maybe in the pool, maybe not all at one time, but 50 throughout a few hours. Mm -hmm. Then we have a weight room, and we have about a dozen to 20 uh, participants lifting weights and doing some cardio. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of captures most. Yeah. So I would say, like, some of those programs are non-essential, right? I mean, they're great programs, and I'm so glad that we offer them, but... You know, I, those are those are the ones that I would consider non-essential. So if you could start, you know, kind of breaking down. I mean, I would even say like the swimming, the swimming. Do we really need to have the swim class? You know, you have some hardcore people that mm -hmm. the actual the actual the 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 um, the mentioning of those different. I mean, I've been there. There, they take that very serious. Oh, I I don't I don't doubt that, and I'm not saying <laughs> we should. Say none of, I'm not saying essential. that we should cancel any of these programs. I'm just saying, you know, like suspending them for two weeks, right? I don't think that it's gonna. Um, I don't think it's going to have a serious impact on the quality of life of our seniors if we suspend it for two weeks, you know? So at this point, we're going to assess it and evaluate the following week. Michael. Right, okay. yeah. But I would say, you know, those are the type of non-essential. I mean, the essential would be the food delivery, right? Having food mm. delivered. But some of these others, I would consider that, that they are non-essential. So I would just ask that we, you know, we start thinking about that. Um, for the next council meeting and be ready to make okay. you know decisions around that sounds good one thing yes. i would also Vice suggest Mayor. is of you know if something does change between now and next week uh shannon does have the authority now yes. to make the immediate changes um effective immediately so mm -hmm. you know, i have another question be, yes go ahead for council. many are we still for the rental facilities are you still scheduling events right now so if someone was to come in tomorrow and schedule an event for three weeks from now two weeks from now are you still scheduling those events or what are you doing with that 
Well, we we most of our large scale events uh, transpire on a Saturday or Sunday, and it's safe to say most, if not all, Saturdays are booked up for the remainder of the year. So, so let's say we would have to cancel all these events. Are you going to reimburse the people that? Yeah, we'd we'd have to discuss that at the executive management level to uh, explore all options. We do have a refund policy, um, and uh, there's some guidelines in in there. But, uh, but this have one to... would be a special circumstance, obviously. Yes, yes. I think it would only be fair to refund participants all of their monies in regards to rental reservations. Okay. I, I agree with that. And what we talked about. Um, the rentals that are going on this weekend, we're not going to cancel those. Obviously, mm -hmm. people have things planned. They're, mm -hmm. for the most part, private parties. But Monday, we're going to reassess. And, um, you know, depending on what the state is um, and what the governor is saying and what the health department is saying, um, we may have to cancel some of those. But, you know, we only have to look at doing, looking at those canceling a week or two out. We don't have to cancel the rest of the year. So it's just playing it by ear every week is a little different and and we'll make our decision right. but i would recommend we do reimburse people their money yeah and I, I think part of it as we, uh, we mentioned earlier it's all assessing and evaluating from here next week and you know, who knows what, what will transpire tomorrow as far as changes uh, throughout the state as well so at this point let's council members have uh, any other further questions i would just ask yes. okay what are are we going to be when are we going to commu communicate this action to our residents um so, and how are we going to communicate this action? Are we going to package it? Like, what is the plan? So, David is, sorry, David Bell is listening right now. He will be preparing a pre press release. He probably run it by me tonight if he has it ready, and we'll send it out first thing in the morning, and then put it on all of our social media. Okay. Awesome. And so. then, if I could um, suggest, like the resident mentioned, Ralph Galvan. Um, Maybe we can get a quote, you know, not only from the city on why we did this, but perhaps a quote from the water agency and um, the school district. And then we could follow that same format uh, for our newsletter. And I think we can talk about that on Wednesday. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much. At this point, council members uh, wishing to share any other information? Thank if you. not. If not, at this point, I will declare the um, special city council member adjourned. That is my motion. Second. Second. Any objections? See none. So move. Viva Ballon Park. Viva Ballon Park. Thank you. Uh, directors, if I could meet with you real quick in the uh, conference room here. We'll just go over a couple things for follow-up.